hey welcome back guys okay so if you haven't subscribed please subscribe like the video and share the video to help the channel grow and if you can help me out on patreon that'll be awesome okay so we continue and in this episode we're talking about inheritance and why inheritance is important so what i will do is i will clear out my class so that we begin from scratch remove everything so we have an empty class at the moment and i will remove everything here okay uh actually i can remove all this all right so there we go so we have an empty class and just an instance of that class here okay so what exactly is inheritance well inheritance is inheriting properties from one class and inheriting them to another so why is this important so let me give an example of why this is important so let's imagine you have a database you have a database class right now in in this class or for example instead of a database class let's just say you have a product class so product like this and then let's say you also have a class named uh, users or user just user like this okay now what normally will happen is this because for you to deal with the product here you have to read from the database so in here you will have a function for example that says function um, let's say um, read or connect to database let's say connect or let's be more specific something like uh, db connect like this right so this function uh, connects me to the database and maybe I might have another function for reading from the database. I'll say db read or something like this. So that one is for connecting, this one is for reading and then I'll have another one for writing, right? db write like so. Mm -hmm. So this is all normal stuff. But the problem comes in because for every class that I create that needs to connect to the database, I will still need these same functions in that class as well, like in here. So I will need the same functions here. They'll do exactly the same things. And this becomes a problem. It may look, not look like a big problem here because they're just like three functions here. But imagine you have 20 classes in your, uh, in your website because classes do get the code piles up over time so you get a lot of classes in your uh, sim, sim project and so you find that uh, there's only three here but you keep repeating this pattern for every class that connects to the uh, database and if there are 20 classes that becomes a problem imagine the way you connect to the database has to change let's say for example you move to a different database so you change the database details in here but the problem is now you have to go to every single class and change the details in there as well. So anything you change in one, you have to go and repeat yourself in every class where you actually used it. So this is very, very inefficient. And this is only three functions here. Sometimes you may need to uh, have similar functions that are 10 or 20 in one class, and then multiply that by the number of classes, then you have a logistical nightmare when you want to change anything. So this is why inheritance comes in to save the day. So what you would do instead, instead of having uh, repeated functions like, so you get all the functions that you know that are similar in every single class, and then you put them in another class. So in this case, uh, we'll create a class named database, of course, like this, yeah. So database is here. So what I will do now is just cut these out and put them in here. So I'll remove, I won't need these anymore as well, like that, because these are similar functions, so we'll put them in here. So here I'll just echo, 
Of course, this is a function which you can use to connect to the database, but in here, I just want to echo this is uh, okay uh, from connect function like this. Yes. Hmm. Let me put a break tag here so that uh, we can have several of these echoed out at once. And then this one as well from uh, a read function, db read. Let's put db connect. And then right here from db write. Okay, something like this, all right? So what we have here is a, uh, a database class, but then we have these now. So how do we get these guys to use exactly these same functions? And that's where inheritance comes in. So we inherit the properties of this. That way, any class that inherits these uh, functions is going to not need to repeat itself and create those functions in there. So in this case, for product to inherit these, we simply use the keyword extend so we say product extends database, like so. And we do the same thing here, like that. So the moment you put extends and then you put another class name, then it's going to get all the functionality in here and put it in here. Now keep in mind that all these are public functions here. So I will write the keyword public just to be explicit about it okay so that is very important and now once we inherit here so i can come here inside product here so inside product i can just say uh i want to call one of these functions so the way you call these functions in the in the child because this is the child of this one it's extending this one so this is the parent class and this is the child and also this one is the child but this one is a sibling of this one so in order to call this function, you just act, you call it exactly the same way you would call a function that is, or a method that is inside the class. So there's no difference. Once you extend, you get everything and you can call it just like it's inside here. So in order to call this one db connect, all we need to do is say this, like this, this uh, db connect, like that, okay? But we can't just put code in here like this. We have to put it inside a function of some kind, right? So let's do that. So we're going to say public function. And now this function will be, uh, uh, let's say, uh, I don't know, uh, new product maybe, something like this, new product. Mm -hmm. So we imagine now, uh, we have another function in here. Now, the thing is, even once you, once you inherit some of these functions, you can create extra functions in here to make your class unique. So all the added functions you put here will be accessible to your class, and also you can still access these. But of course, you can't access the functions that will be created in user here, because this is just the sibling. So why I created this is because I want to use this function to reference one of these. So let's say when adding a product, adding a new product, which is uh, this one, add a new product, you need to connect to the database. So you will call this function that connects to the database, even though it's not part of the class, but it's going to be called still. So the advantage of this system, you can see that once I change how I connect to the DB one time here, it means every class that extended this class is going to be changed immediately. So this is very, very powerful stuff. So I'm calling this one from here. So let's create a new product from here. So here when we, um, um, when we make an instance of a class, if we make an instance of db, we can't call the functions that are in its children here, no. So what we do is we create a new version of product here. So new product, okay? So product is equal to new product. So let me just say uh, phone. Phone is equal to new product, okay? Now 
if I do this, I say phone um, new product like this. So I'm calling that new product function. What do you see will happen? Let's go to the browser and refresh. You see from DB connect function. So as you can see, we code it from here because we've extended database. So we are calling a function that is in here. So we can do exactly the same thing in here. So in this manner, we can use the connect function on everyone that extends it. Now, the uh, accessor here matters. So if, for example, I put private here like this, and then I try to run this, you'll see what happens is that we're going to get a fatal error which says call to private method. So the reason is that a private method cannot be inherited at all. It cannot be inherited. So if I were to call this function from within the database class, it will work. So if I call this from here, if right here I write this DB connect, it's going to work fine, even though it's private. But once you inherit, you cannot inherit a private function. So this function remains in there and doesn't come here. But what happens if you want a, uh, a function to be private, but you still want it to be inheritable, so to say. So you want it as a private function so that no one can call it from outside. A private function, even if I instantiate database here, from there I do an instance and I try to run something like this and say db connect there. It's going to fail because you can't call a private function even from outside the class. A private function will only be called from within the class itself. But if you want it to have the properties of a private function, let's say you don't want it to be able to be called from outside, but you also want it to be inheritable this is where you use the word protected. So you say protected, like so. So protected means it's a private function. However, it can still be inherited, okay? So if I try to run this, it should work. So refresh, and you see it working there, right? Even though it's uh, protected. So this is how uh, protected and uh, public and private work when it comes to extensions. Now, just another note to keep on extensions here. So if, for example, I have this function here, right? Uh, let me put something else here. Let me say echo from, let me put that there. From, um, let's say, product class. Okay, so this is from the product class, okay? Now, it's also very possible for me to use this user and extend this child class here. So instead of extending database itself here, I can use this to extend product. So let's try that and see what happens. So I will extend product. So now user has become a grandchild of database because this database is a parent of this one because this one extends it. But then we are also extending this one again. So we are extending the extended version. So class extends product here, right? So let's see exactly what we are able to access in this situation. So I want to see if I can access a protected function, function from the grandfather here. So this is the grandfather. This is the father and this is the child. So in this case, I want to access this function. Keep in mind it's protected. So let's see if we can do that. So I will just try to create a function. So this one is a public function because I want to be able to access it from outside the class. So I'll say <clears throat> uh, public function uh, do stuff. So this is just a random function here. So what I want to do is I just want to say this 
connect like this okay so this connect now remember we are reading from the grandfather so let's see if we're going to get this message quite all right so here i will change this to user so I'll say user so i've created a new user so i'll change this to something like me is equal to new user then me i want to read do stuff so i'll put this here like that and let's see what happens so if i refresh you see that uh, i still get the same message so i can still inherit an inherited class uh, and still get all these functions working so all these functions are still available to me so i can do the db read as well if i want so i can say db read and it will still work so from db read function right even though i have not i am not extending keep note that i'm not extending the database class no i'm extending this one which is extending the database class so this extended by, by that and extended by this so it's like inception but for extends and all that but if i make this private of course i will not be able to get anything so a private function cannot be inherited whatsoever okay uh, wrong place it's supposed to be here private because that's the one i'm accessing so i'll get an error but if i put protected or public i get it correctly let's come back here okay so you see how that goes <clears throat> and how it can save you from typing too much code so put all the all the code that you want this is what you should take away from here you put all the code that you want to be common in most classes you put them in one class and you name it you give it a general name and then you put all that and then what you do is every class you create you simply extend the main one and then you get all that functionality and then you can add extra functions in there to make it uh, unique to itself okay <clears throat>